Welcome to Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere with your host, Chris Parker. Well, hello, this is Chris Parker, and we're back with Everyday Entrepreneurs Everywhere. And to delay, today, coming in from South Africa, is Eli Goldstein. And Eli and I, and I have known each other for quite a few years, uh, back in the day, part of the Global CX panel, which still exists, which is a panel of thinkers and doers around customer experience, strategy, and design. Eli, would you, um, yeah, introduce yourself, please, to the audience. And, you know, so who is Eli? What do you do? And, and, and why do you do what you do? Well, um, I don't think we have too much time for me to go into too much detail. Yeah. But anyway... <laughs> Um, my background, strangely enough, is um, one in agriculture and mm. in farming for a few years. I actually picked up a lot of experience in, in a whole lot of areas which, strangely enough, are becoming very um, interesting in terms of today's world. Um, that is the within farming, one has the ability to see the value chain very kef- very easily. And you can go from the production all the way through to when the food hits the table. And the same then was very useful when I joined IBM uh, in terms of working in various industries, uh, which then led me to this whole idea of the customer, as it were and the customer being the person who really puts the food on everybody's table, if I can put it very simply. Mm -hmm. Uh, What is interesting I found was that, unfortunately, um, customers in terms of being treated well has been something which is a bit of an enigma in many countries, Uh, which is why I got involved uh, probably some eight to nine years ago in customer experience, and that's how Chris and I met. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting that with this whole COVID-19 scenario at the moment, that the ability to focus on the customer has becoming more important than ever. And I think that if I can say that what drives me very much is this idea that customers need to be treated very well and that, unfortunately, I find that there is so much clutter in terms of information around what customer experience is Mm -hmm. that what really got to me, and in fact, it was before Chris pointed me to what he is doing, uh, before you pointed me to the canvas, I actually did some work on the strategy canvas a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And I find that the ability to look at a business from the point of view of, let's call it a helicopter view, as opposed to trying to sift through the various silos that exist in a business and not having communication between people in the business and not being able to understand that every single person in that business is in fact someone who is responsible for that customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And that is really become, I think, a passion with me. So I would say that's probably what drives me. Beautiful. And something that seems so obvious to you and I, why do you think this customer centricity or customer service or customer orientation is such an enigma? Well, you know, how, how is this not, how is this not top of mind for everyone, do you think? Well, it's very strange. I think, you know, that I, I think for many, many years, um, companies have been driven by striving for profits, mm-hmm. um, looking after the interests of shareholders, mm-hmm. and in many cases, ignoring what was really the bottom line in terms of getting in from getting enough value into the company and I, I think that the the ability unfortunately what has happened with a lot of large enterprises is that they have lost the plot in terms of um, understanding that if you're in in a management or leadership capacity you cannot just abrogate responsibility 
to different parts of the organization. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you've got someone who is taking care of the customer, it doesn't end there. It actually has to permeate right through the organization. Oh, oh you mean and the, cu the customer service department isn't the only group that needs to be responsible for the customer? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay. In fact, this is where it all falls <laughs> over. And this is where, unfortunately, when we put the, the sort of band-aid or the plaster of a so-called contact center or call center in order to get rid of all the problems mm -hmm. we ostensibly have with customers, is that it's all very well and good if they get it right. But unfortunately, once it leaves the contact center, it falls into some black hole. Yeah. And that has been something which has been the bane of my life, I think. And to that, try and find a way of getting people to work together. And that, I so, would Im imagine, is the, the spirit or the, the drive behind Customer Line, which is your own company. Um, can, you, can you share a little bit about what value you create through your com company? So, well, I think we, we, what we try and do is, is to make people understand that, un unfortunately, if you don't have total commitment right across the company, and it actually is not embedded, as it were, in the culture of the organization, that you really are not going to get excellence within the customer experience space. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that we try to align the business towards the customer as opposed to the other way around. So very much, I know this is a hackneyed term, an outside-in approach mm -hmm. as opposed to an inside-out approach. And everything is really driven in terms of what the customer needs. And as we know, in many cases, legacy computer systems, information systems, etc., become almost an albatross in terms of the company being able to perform with regard to the customer. Yeah. Whereas if they had started from the outside, from the, what the customer really needs, and then a design or fashion the business in that way um, is, is actually uh, very important. And interestingly enough, the, the canvas, including the one that you're working with, does show that. It's good taking you back and saying, hang on, what is it that you're really doing here in, term of, in terms of customers? Mm -hmm. And how do you put that together, looking at the top down? And I think that that ability to, in a way, simplify something which any business, as we know, is extremely complex, to yeah. be able to simplify that to a way that everyone in the organization understands what it is you're really doing, almost takes me back to this farm thing where you can see from the time you plant the seed until you harvest mm. and the distribution, et cetera, it's the same concept, basically, that value chain. And it's, it's yeah, really nice. this whole idea, you know, of, of the organization being this uh, organism that, that has to work, its neural system, as it were, has to work together in order for the, for the company to succeed. Yeah, I love it. I, I think you have to look at an organization in different ways, um, through different lenses, if you will, and also at different times, because it is very much a living thing. And then also you can use something like, a, like the simplicity scan, you know, the simplicity ca canvas that, that, that you know, you've used that, that I've made. Um, but I, th I think it's almost any lens that you can put up, any canvas or, or any framework and take a moment to discover your organization through that, realizing that it is limited because we're limited by language and we're limited by time. And then what you discover, of course, you know, determine what to ignore and then what to actually adopt. Um, because those, you know, organizations change and there is legacy. Um, in your, your background, you, you've shared a bit about, you know, your agricultural background, but you also have a technology background. I think you have, you know, sometimes you, I think you've even been a CIO, um, you know, one or two times, I think, but yes. that, like me, I think you come in on how does technology help or hinder the customer experience? Uh, can you share a little bit about that? I think it certainly does. I think 
we certainly have to be very careful that we don't make the mistake that we see technology as a silver bullet. Mm. So if one is looking at digitizing or digitalizing, whichever way you want to call it, mm. a company, it's not just a question of um, putting up an app or you know putting out systems over there that the customer can actually get through to you on. It, in fact, if you're talking about proper digital transformation, then it's very much around the customer. Mm -hmm. It's very much starting at the point of which saying, what is the customer need and how do we build it going again from outside inwards? Mm -hmm. and, and I think some of the biggest challenges that one has is that, again, talking about how leadership tends to, to not even delegate, but abrogate the responsibility to the IT department. The IT department doesn't talk the language of the business and vice versa. And unfortunately, that communication has been many the, the cause of many uh, failures in terms of whether it be customer relationship management or whatever technology um, innovation one tries to bring in mm -hmm. to a business. And I, I think what was quite interesting is um, I did some work back in a number of years back with a chap by the name of Robin Lawton. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. He's an, uh, an American guy living in, I think he's in Florida. And he's written, um, very early on, he wrote a book on a customer-centered culture mm -hmm. and recently brought out another book called Mastering Excellence. And I, I, I think it's quite interesting in, the, in, in terms of the way he looks at how one... Um, really uses communication, uses language within an organization mm -hmm. to make sure that we can communicate and people understand each other. And that comes back to the issue of yeah. technology. Is technology yeah. benefiting or not? Yeah. Well, so, so, yes, one could go into a lot about that, but I don't think we'll... No, well, it. one of the reasons for my laughing is, is actually the ebullient... Um, the, the coaching brand that I have launched during this this crazy Corona COVID time, the the pineapple logo mm. is very much inspired by that story because as a head of IT or it's called head of change and innovation for a division of a bank, um, people you know, my people were were proposing technologies, upgrades, and investments um, mm. that carried risk, um, you know, that would change the shape of the, of the landscape of the business. And the way, the language they were using as I, as I was listening to them was unintelligible to the CFO and the, and the, and the commercial people. And what I, what, what I used as an example during that time, and, and it, I, I got it as a meme somewhere off, 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 you know, online somewhere, but it was the statement of, trust me, I have a pineapple. You know, <laughs> and because and, and, I said, oh, guys, that, you know, you're asking for, you know, a couple hundred thousand or more to upgrade SAP to HANA for in, you know, yeah. in memory processing. So guys, they do not care about your pineapple. What is exactly. it going to do? <laughs> what is it going to do for the customer you know, or, or the top line or the bottom line. And um, um, so, so that, that sort of just stuck and then, and then and it, it carried forward. And there's, a, there's the pineapple and the Abulia logo. So it was, uh, no, I have to, I have to laugh. Um, um, it, it is, you know, for those technical people listening to this, which is probably, you know, half, half of my community, um, before you, and I'm curious if you have any advice on this also, Eli, before you try to, convince or pitch or do anything about tech, really take a moment to have a conversation with the person, either the customer or the executive, and just ask them the question, what are you trying to achieve? And not only listen to, not only listen to what their answer is, but listen to how they describe it. You know, Absolutely. like, well, you know, you know, well, I'm trying to, you know, increase uh, NPS by X or Y or, you know, you know okay, well then, <laughs> Maybe you should orient on, on why NPS, net promoter scores, is important for them or not. Um, but how do you help organizations get on that 
same awareness of outside in and, and get on the same language and, and, and how to make, you know, more purposeful investments? Yeah, it's, um, I, I think very much just, just to add to what you were saying, I, I have a book on my bookshelf called um, Think Like Your Customer. Mm. By a chap called Bill Stinnett, you may know who mm. it is, probably read, read it. And, and I think that he aimed it at salespeople in terms of how they would sell to the C-suite. But I think it's very much applicable to say any, you know, one within the company that is trying to get a message across. And at the end of the day, you really have to say, it's effectively where are you at the moment and where do you want to be and how do we get there? Mm -hmm. And it's a, in, in some ways it's as simple as that. Unfortunately, the, the how we get there is not always that simple. No. But it's very much a question of, of, of plotting that out and having mm -hmm. some kind of idea of what the steps are to where you want to mm -hmm. get to. And, and I think it's very unfortunate that what COVID has done is it's actually escalated. I, I recently wrote an article about this change agent, the unseen global change agent, mm -hmm. that has moved things from being at a certain point to where they are today. And you would think that, you know, people that never wanted to touch technology all of a sudden are using it online. We're not talking about, you know, millennials. We're talking about people of my age and older that are actually in doing yeah. things, banking online and email, yeah. and Zoom I've, calls. I've seen some some funny little little memes and, and you know graphics and say, okay, well, who is the who is the most responsible for this digital transformation acceleration? The CIO, the CTO, the CDO, or COVID? Yeah. And then, poof, right. you know, <laughs> you know, and, and um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the problem, however, is, you know, that, that while that's great, and I mean, you are now saying, well, we've kind of pushed you into the situation, your fight and flight reflex has made you become yeah. more digitally literate, if you wish. Well, what the, we haven't looked yeah. at is, is what's behind that, you know, cybersecurity, et cetera, et cetera. And in, you know, are we, there, there are all sorts of issues around that. And, and I think that if you recall the chap uh, who spoke at one of those sessions uh, at the beginning, Herman Singh, when he spoke about the fact that ultimately there was 10 years of planning, as it were, yeah. from the technology department. But did they tell the C-suite about it? I don't think so. No, probably not. Yeah, well, I think that the, the, the counterbalance of this, you know, COVID being the, the accelerator of digital transformation you also kind of have to ask yourself, well, how much of the previous transformation was actually unnecessary, um, you know, on one hand, but then on the other hand, a lot of these technical teams have been preparing for this. I, I have a friend of mine who's the CIO for an, an adult education, um, national in the Netherlands adult education company, and he shared mm -hmm. with me that they had it all purchased, and it was the 40 plus instructors who just didn't see the value of it. And once COVID happened, those people said, just rushed in for the training to, and, and they were able to like pretty much overnight or basically within a week, move all of their on adult classes online. And, 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 it, and because the, the reason the burning platform showed up and then they were in the right place at the right time. So um, you mentioned um, those sessions. And so I, I, I'd love it if you spend some time about just tell, a little, tell the audience about those sessions, um, what those sessions were and why you arranged those and, and, and how wonderful they were. So um, I think it was just slightly before, maybe just when the lockdown started with COVID in South Africa, um, Helen Pence and I actually sat down and we, we had been thinking of doing some uh, it was actually some seminars, physical seminars, um, because we spoke at a conference in February at the same conference, which she chaired. And we said, well, maybe we need to run a couple of, you know, these sessions. Um, but it, we weren't even thinking of doing it remotely. 
And of course, then when this COVID happened, we, we, de we decided, well, what about this idea of saying, um, here we have a situation where there's a sudden crisis. And why don't we take the crisis as a case study in terms mm -hmm. of saying how you can change business very quickly in an agile manner? And what would you do in order to live with that? And how would you go forward from there? Mm -hmm. So that, that was the basic premise on which we held this. And I think that um, reaching out to 12, uh, 11 or 12 people, including yourself, um, and the response we got was quite incredible. I mean, there was just absolutely no argument. Everybody got on board very quickly. But what was amazing, I think, is that we managed to pull this all together, literally, in a, in a matter of a few weeks. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously the, the marketing didn't have the same run-up that one would have normally. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow it, it, it fell together. And, yeah. and I think that was also an example of how one can really do something if you have to. Yeah, it was incredible. And, and, the, um, and, and thank you again for the invitation because I, I, I presented, but I also chose to join, I think, all of the sessions because it was a series of five sessions in the evening for me. And you had a couple experts um, speaking, you know, facilitated by, by yourself and Helen. And then the participants, and there was um, like five or six teams of, of business people and entrepreneurs and, and just a really interesting, diverse group of people. Um, and then they were able to, to, you know, interact and ask questions. And then they had some, some homework in between and report back. Um, for me, it, it, was, it was really interesting and, 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 and educational and inspiring just to be the fly on the wall and, and participate in that. So it was, um, and I understood from uh, Helen and, and yourself that you're going to run more of these things, I hope, is that? Yes, yeah. yes, we are planning to do that. And um, I, th I think that given the time we had, um, you know, in that short time, the, the outcome was good. I, yeah. I think it was generally good. And, and, uh, and, you know, I think that in a way was a little bit of a, laboratory test, if you wish, mm -hmm. in terms of seeing how it would work. Mm -hmm. So with a number of tweaks, we are certainly planning to hold more of those. Okay. And how can people um, find that event? Well, we have a, um, a website which will be updated with as soon as the new events start coming okay. on. It's uh, symbiosis, which is spelt very differently from the normal uh, I, spelling. Yeah, I can put, I'll put it in the show notes for people so they can okay. see the, the link there. Yeah. Symbiosis.com. Yeah. And also we are putting up a, a LinkedIn group um, as well as, mm -hmm. you know, some other social media links, etc. Nice. Nice. And um, I'm curious if we loop back to your business, um, because the, the um, and, and I'm just literally um, curious about this. It felt like the uh, sort of that mixed mastermind group was really more about giving from you and the and the guests and the participants as opposed to to capturing deals and values and needs. How 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 did that event contribute to I don't know your 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 business growth or uh, was there a commercial aspect to that? Um. I think it was more of a potential spin-off from that rather mm -hmm. than a, an actual, uh, you know, I, we, we, we sort of hope that there may well flow uh, mm -hmm. business towards any of the, of the panelists, which we didn't have a problem with. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think, you know, the sharing, what, what is interesting to me is the ability to, to get people together. And I've always been um, a proponent of collaboration. And, mm -hmm. and I think that in certainly in an entrepreneurial world, one needs to collaborate. You just have to. Uh, you have to be able to turn to people, whether it be for, for coaching, mentoring, whether it be for, um, you know, involving them in, in projects or whatever the case may be. Um, I think it's very important because that way you can then compete um, with large enterprises by having a group of people um, who work together on a particular project or mm. a, a program, but at the same time not have the uh, overhead of having all of those people 
you know, as part of your um, your headcount, and yeah. uh, pushing up the the cost to the customer. Yeah. Um, so I think these kind of think tanks, or we 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 actually want to call it a um, an ecosystem of critical thinkers, or mm -hmm. something to the to that effect, which we're busy working on. Um, I, I think the whole idea here is to benefit the individual entrepreneur, but at the same time, you know that. Um, you know, two plus two should equal seven and not four, so that you basically get yeah. that, that uh, multiplier effect. I'm really interested to see how uh, how it evolves because because I think it was a, it was a solid experiment. Some really good people involved, some some meaningful insights came out of it, um, and I also loved it that you and Helen were were just organizing like-minded critical thinkers. I think mostly just to help each other during this crazy time. Um, and realized, I think, that the, the, the benefits, you know, for your business or my business would come later. So I, I just really appreciated the culture and the, and the mindset and the style on that. So, um, so thank you again for the, for the invitation. And I will put the, the show notes in there. Um, okay. we've, got a we've just got a couple minutes left. Um, okay. I, I'm curious if, if, you know, maybe, maybe two more questions. But one of them is about... Um, momentum and keeping things going and so you know you work um, um, now at a distance um, not able to see your customers all you know every day maybe like like you used to uh, how do you how do you stay positive how do you how do you keep your your mindset in the right place and, and um, keep growing your business during this this insane time we live in well I, I think one of my other hobbies is research <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and I think that, that um, certainly that keeps me very much uh, mm -hmm. involved. But at the same time, I think it's important to every now and again, you know, make contact, even if it's at a personal level mm -hmm. with your customers, um, which I try and do as far as I can. Um, everybody being, you know, although we're all in lockdown, I think everybody's very busy. So you've got to find that gap. But I think, you know, people really appreciate your, even if you just call them uh, for 10, five or 10 minutes, how yeah. are you doing or, or an email? Yeah. So I think that's extremely important in these times. And, um, I, you know, I, I think even just feeding them uh, information that may be of benefit to them, just sending them links to read, et cetera, et cetera, in terms of, which is where the research comes in yeah. as well. Uh, well, I'm not sure what you're seeing in South Africa, but what I'm certainly seeing here in, in Europe is uh, WhatsApp groups, um, really theme or topic-based WhatsApp groups. Um, maybe there's too many of them, in fact, you know, on, on my on my phone. Um, but what I'm seeing there is that that is a almost sort of a, just a constant stream of. Um, today it's been overwhelmed by happy birthdays by uh, a lady I, I, I collaborate with quite frequently. And, um, but oftentimes there's also links to interesting stuff, uh, positive stories, white papers flying around. Are you seeing WhatsApp going, you know, in South Africa as a Oh, yes, a absolutely. In, yeah. in fact, I, I'm part of a WhatsApp group. Um, it's called CX Community of Practice. Hmm. Um, it is, it, it's flooded with, with messages all the time. But the, the most interesting message I saw this morning was from the, uh, I'm also on a, uh, another group, which is the, um, they wanted me to stand as a director on this new board. It's an institute of, of custom experience, but just time-wise, I couldn't do it. So I, I put myself forward as a volunteer when they needed me. Mm -hmm. And that group, um, you know, also, they, they're less uh, prolific with their messages. Mm -hmm. But the CX Cop group had one message today where the chair of that was saying, um, you know, that, there are people that are currently looking for business and out of work. Can we help type of yeah. thing? So it's becoming, you know, very much that type of support group as well. And it should be because if you're there and if you can help or if you need work. So Eli, we need to wrap up sadly, cause I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, how can people find you? What's the best way that for them to find you? I think probably, um, if you go to customerline.com, um, Mm -hmm. And there's a there's an email address on there. Okay, it's probably the best way. Thank yeah. you very much, Chris. Thanks for the opportunity. My pleasure. It's always wonderful to chat with you.
Learn more at ebillion.com slash podcast.